In God's presence, last since um, the beginning of this month, we've been talking about um, mentorship, mentoring, and mentorship. And um, I, the pa our pastor gave us a very beautiful introduction last week. I'm going to ride on that. So today I'm talking about the foundational concept of discipleship. The foundational concept of discipleship. From what we learned last week, Pastor made us understand that there are three levels of, there are different levels of mentorship. We have mentoring in form of discipleship, mentoring in form of discipleship, followership, apprenticeship, and internship, and he explained each of them. But because we are in church, and the mentor, mentoring or mentorship that we're talking about would, would be delving towards discipleship. And so I'll be using more of the word disciple but when I say disciple, it's the same thing as having the mind of a mentor and a protege. And so who is a protege? I love what I found. A protege is a person who is guided and supported by an older or more experienced or influential person. Supported. Please take note of those words. Guided by an older or more experienced or influential person. And then another definition that surprised me, it says a protege is one who is protected, cover in front. And then when we, when we go on in the, in, the, in the lesson this morning, you will understand that the meaning of the word protected. When you are supported and guided, you are protected from falling. You are protected from making mistakes. I remember what um, Brother Solomon said last week. He says experience is the best teacher, but you, sometimes you don't need to learn from your own experience. You learn from the experience of others. So in other words, you are then protected because you are learning. You are leaning on the experience of an older or, an experience, or a more experienced person. And the mentoring process, as explained last week, involves the mentor, the mentee, of course you understand too, the mentee is the same thing as protege or the disciple and then mutual consent. And it is totalitarian. I love, you know when Pastor explained it last week, he said for, for discipleship or for mentoring process to be successful, it must be totalitarian. What does that mean? It must be total, not an aspect. It's every aspect of your life that is open to discipling, open to mentoring for you to be successful or for you to be protected. People who don't do well, we all know that, at following, cannot do well at leading. And so the concept of mentoring is to help you, to guide you, to support you, to avoid, to prevent you from falling. And so, like I said, for spiritual purposes, we'll be delving more about, talking more about discipleship. First Corinthians 11 verse one. First Corinthians 11 verse one. Thank you very much, Pastor, for giving me this opportunity. This was a sudden one. But my, uh, my heart was doing bim 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 as I came to the pulpit this morning because Pastor is on seat. <laughs> Be you followers of me, even as I am, even as I also am of Christ. There is a common factor there, Christ. Be you followers of me. Who is talking there? Paul the Apostle is talking. Be you followers of me as I also am of Christ. Follow me but there is somebody I'm following. Who is the person I'm following? So invariably, who are we following? That's it, that's the concept of discipleship. I, you are not following me because of me. You are following me, you are following the Christ in me. So I am a mo I'm, I'm showing you Christ, but I'm not your model. Who is our model? So please, let's not use the word model interchangeably with mentor, no. Your mentor is not your model. Your mentor is a guide showing you the model. Christ is your model. Christ is the example you should follow. Why? Because the mentor is a human being. And so, two things you learn from your, your mentor, wisdom and grace. Wisdom and grace. And those, the wisdom and grace is as a result of his or our relationship with Christ. And then he, passes this, he or she passes the same to you. Now, what is the foundational concept? You see, this message was very heavy in my heart last night. I began to think about so many things. Of course, we have so many qualities of a protege or a disciple or a follower. But the very first one, that is the foundation, is what we want to talk about this morning. So what's the foundational concept of a disciple or a protege? The foundational concept is genuine relationship with Christ. Heart conversion. There must be a genuine art conversion. To benefit from mentoring process, conversion is key. 
You must be converted, like I told you. I'm not talking about mentoring in the business world. We're talking about mentoring in Christ, mentoring in, in the Christendom, mentoring in the church. It takes such a relationship to turn from a goat to a sheep because only a sheep can be guided. Only a sheep can be controlled. And there was a time pastor took us through an extensive study, the um, difference between a goat and a sheep. And from that, you are able to deduce that sheep alone is the only animal that can be guided. And many of us have ever seen those who guide, guide sheep. You, when you tell them, go this way, they go. Easily, easily entreated, easily guided, easily controlled, easily supported. But we'll tell a goat to do something. That's why they say, as stubborn as a? Such a person then finds it easier to be an excellent follower, disciple, or protege. Because only a sheep can be taught. Only a sheep can be controlled. Jesus referred to his disciples not as goats. He usually called them sheep. My sheep hear my voice and follows me. Only a sheep can be discipled through the, through the right path. Like I said, Christ is your model. Your mentor is your guide. Now, what are the things we want to consider this morning? Two characters. We're going to look at a pair of two pairs of characters. One from the Old Testament, and then one from the New Testament. It's going to be like a case, case study, and then we'll bring out some salient qualities of a disciple. So for you to benefit from the mentoring process, how should you be positioned? The foundational concept of discipleship. Let's open our Bibles to 2 Chronicles chapter 24. Like I said, one from the Old Testament, you'll be dazzled by, the, by this because sometimes most of us are not really conversant with the stories in the Old Testament. There are very beautiful stories there that we can draw some lessons from. I'm going to talk about Joash and Jehoiada. Joash and Jehoiada. Second Chronicles 24. I will pick some certain verses. But when you have time, please go through the whole of the chapter. Chapter 24 and chapter 25. And it will do you a whole lot of good for this next 20 minutes, please, if you keep off your phone from doing what you are not supposed to do while in church. Joash was seven years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Zebia of Beersheba. Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada, the priest. Let me give you a background. At this time, during, the, during this period, the, 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 the Israelites were falling and rising, falling and rising, different kings. And if you, if you are taking time to study this very particular um, um, chronicles, it talks about kings who did right in the sight of God and kings who did not do right, and then those who did right but not with their own hearts. So many stories. But now, this story is talking about a very wicked woman, Natalia, who, had, who was reigning, and then she had killed everyone, but they hid Joash. Jehoiada was the priest, was the priest, was an uncle, was the, was the husband of the aunt of Joash. And Joash was the, from the lineage of Jehoshaphat. So he had a little, a little light of righteousness in him, so to say. And so they hid him for six years in the temple. And because the people were not used to going to the temple at that time, they were following Baal. So it was easy for him to be hidden. And you, remember, you can imagine, while he was hidden in the temple, he would have been trained Proverbs 22, verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. He would have been trained. Because the, very, the, the first seven years of a child is very important. So at the age of six, he had, he had an understanding of what it meant to serve God. And so that was the background of this story. Now, let's look at verse 14. Verse 14, like I said, I'm going to be reading certain aspects. Now, okay, no, let's look at... Um, Je verse 3, and Jehoiada took for him two wives, and he begat sons and daughters. So when King Joash became, I mean, when Joash became a king, he was a child, a child. Jehoiada was the priest. But rather than just being the priest, he was his mentor. He was his guide. And everything that Joash did, there was nothing he did that, that wasn't without the consent of Jehoiada. There was even another aspect that the Bible talked about Joash and King, and jo King Joash and Jehoiada. And that was how the, the relationship was until Joada died. Let's rush down to verse 17. Now, after the death of Joada, came the princes of Judah and made obeisance to the king. Then the king akined unto them. Now, this is, the, this is where I'm going. All the while, while Joada was alive, Joash was doing the right thing because Joada was present. Immediately, did you read the 
came back, he said immediately. He didn't even wait a while. The king, the other princes came. Of course, they were, they were maybe they were almost at the same, I mean, age, age range. And then they came, they acted on him. You know, when you are reading the scriptures, you, you, if you are very artistic, you can put some drama into it. They must have told him, now, thank God you are free from the clutches of that old man. All the while he was here, you couldn't do what was really in your heart. Now, he is gone. Thank God you are free. Let, now, listen to us. And they gave him an advice. If you go through the scriptures, immediately he died. Lots of things changed. And in verse 22, then Joash the king remembered not the kindness which Joada his father. Did you hear? The, his father. He was no longer a mentor. He was, he was no longer a guide. He was a father. Your mentors are like your parents, your spiritual parents. And so the scriptures specifically said Joada his father, not his biological father. Had done to him, but slew his son. Can you imagine the deterioration of, Je of Joash? He became so wicked that he killed Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada the priest. He forgot everything he had ever learned. What went wrong? What went wrong was that he was not following Jehoiada with his heart. There was no heart change. There was no conversion. You can't. You can be tamed. You're being tamed does not mean you are changed. You can be checked. You're being checked does not mean you are converted. The structures on ground can tame you. The church structures can tame you, can check you. Yes, I remember. Ah, but I, ah, but I, mentor Uche is there. Oh. Mentor Lumine is there. He has always told me this. Mentor Emmanuel is there. Mentor Ruth, ah, she must not hear. Ah, she will use English to finish me. You are being checked. You are being tamed, but you are not changed. Seek for a change. It is the change in your heart that we stand for you when your mentors are no longer there. Did you remember what story the pastor told us? He went to a village far away from Lagos. Nobody was there. Pastor Sam was not there. Nothing, no one was there that knew him. He would have done anything to get away with it. They don't write it on the face now. And he will come back to Lagos and he will be blasting as usual. But it's something had gone wrong. And heaven has taken notice. And do you know what somebody said? He says, it's not your sin. Of course, we have been forgiven long before we even sinned. But God will never promote you because he will know that you are, you are not ready to leave that class. And then you will not be ready for the next level. So he will just, everyone will not cast you out, but you are the one delaying yourself. They were together. The influence did not impact on the king at the time most crucial. How do you know when there is influence? When the influencer is no longer there. Then you will know how deep-rooted was that influence. There wasn't any positive influence on him. He still followed the negative influence of his mates. What are you doing in your office? The eyes of the mentors cannot reach you. Cannot go with you to your places of work, to your offices, to your school. That is why you need a heart conversion. Because there's an eye that cannot be caged. There's an eye that never closes. There's an eye that, is, that cannot be taken out. That is the eye you should seek to please. Now, what caused Josh, Josh problem? Immaturity. He was only following instructions. Very hypocritical. Do you remember what Brother Solomon said yesterday? I'm mean, last week. I started pondering on that. I have never seen Jesus in that light before. Who, 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 what, what other better, greater mentor would Ju Judas have asked for? But do you know what? He and Joash are the same. They didn't follow with their hearts. They were only following instructions. They were only following the people. His heart was not right with God. Do you know the meaning of Jehoiada? Jehoiada means knowledge of the Lord. But the knowledge of the Lord was not given to Joash because of the state of his heart. Joash could not assess the knowledge of the Lord. You can only assess the wisdom and grace of your mentors if you have the right attitude. And the right attitude can only be as a result of the right heart. And no heart can be right except it's right by the blood of Jesus. Do you know what Charles Spurgeon said about this? He said if there had been, if there had been that work of grace within his soul, that's within Joah's soul, where there, where, where there appeared to be in his life. Now, this is the difference. There should be a heart change, a soul change that translates into a life change. It is not in the paparazzi we do that shows that your life has changed. So if there had 
have been a soul change, just as there was apparently physically in the life of Joash, he would not have turned aside as he did. For where a work of grace is real and true, it is known by his abiding influence throughout the whole of life. Not ephemeral influence, not a, a part-time influence. Influence only when you are in church. Influence only when you remember that somebody is there that knows you. It's a, an influence that is forever, but that influence starts from the heart. Where godly principles have been imparted and a divine life has been infused, these things are not easily taken from a man. It is true. Where there's a divine life change, they can't be taken from you. It's like light. You can't hide it. You will know it to be different. You can't hide your difference. But when you become a chameleon, when you get to the brown city, you become brown. When you get to the green city, ah, they say that you become whatever it is. Eh, when you are in Rome, be, be, behave like it's a lie. It's a lie. When you are light, light can never become darkness. Have you ever seen light entering into darkness and coming out again to become light? No! Light is light perpetually. If you are light, you will be light everywhere. As a result of the divine life, light can never assume the position of darkness. It's not possible. It is not light or darkness. So when you are light, when the light of Christ is in you, from within, not physical, it shows. It's a transformation from the, from the heart that becomes permanent. And so that's the story of Josh. Please take time to study it. It's so pathetic. And did you know the end of it? When he died, he was assassinated. When he died, he, he was not buried with the kings. It was Jehoiada, his mentor, because of his life that was buried in the cemetery of the kings. Your position will not be taken. Your position will not be swapped with somebody else. In the name of Jesus. You will not sell your soul on a platter of gold. Ah, you didn't say amen very well. Yeah. Joash was of the nine age of jo Joash, like I told you. Unfortunately, he had no relationship with God. Seek relationship with God. That's what will help you. That's what will impart your life permanently. It's much easier to build a temple for God than to be a temple for him. Very easy. Joash built temples, a temple for God. He was even interested. He even called Joash and said, why, why are we the priests wasting time? We want to repair the temple. We want to do the work of God. Everybody thought, ah, thank God. Joash is a good king. He's a king after the heart of God. They didn't know that they, those were just externals. The externals cannot sustain you on the day of temptation. You will fall flat. You can only be sustained from the internal. And so, don't just seek to build a temple for God. Seek to be a temple for God. Say, I'm a temple for God. Don't be zealous about the externals and of divine worship, and yet your heart is not right towards God. Don't give your heart to your mentor without first giving it to Jesus. Don't give your heart to your mentor without first, oh, I love you, mentor, whatever, I love you. Do you love Jesus? That's the basis. That's the basis of what gain will it be? If we don't make heaven after all this mentoring, of what gain? After all the money, after the business, after the, everything we have gotten, of course, we are successful. Success lies in us, but that's not the end. The main game, the main game is for you to make heaven. And that can only be when you have a heart for Jesus. Don't be consumed to giving attention to God's servants without you being God's servants. Nobody is interested in your attention, but we are interested in your attention, the attention you give to God. How much attention do you give to him during the week? Is it only on Sunday morning you remember, oh, thank God, today is Sunday, we're going to be blessed today. Is that the only time you remember? How much attention do you give to him? How much of him is in you? There's this story of a leopard. A man got a leopard. A leopard is a wild animal. And then he tamed him, took him to his house, and they began to live together as friends. No harm, no problem. One afternoon, the man was sleeping. And then the leopard went near him, took his, one of his hands, licked it. Mm, mm, beautiful. Licked it harder and tasted blood. Then the leopard in him came out. All this while, he was a leopard. He was just tamed. 
was not changed. The nature had not changed. Has your nature changed? The change is from within. That's why the scripture says a leopard cannot change his skin. So that leopard was subdued, but it was not renewed. It was kept in check, but it was not converted. The taste of blood brought out the old nature. What can bring out the old nature in you? When a temptation becomes very strong, and then you throw everything away. You never even had it before. What will make you throw it away? You never had it before. It's just that the, the, the taste of the blood now brought out the old nature that had always been there, but was in check, never renewed. Please seek renewal. Only a human nature kept in check for a while, but not the spirit of God creating a new life. That's the life we're talking about. But when there's a new life, it infuses the life in you. You can't just do it. When you do it, when you make a mistake, it's like you have, you have, you have committed the most grievous sin. That's a conscience. Please, grace does not, is not a license for nonsense. Let's be careful. Very careful. Now let's go to the New Testament. I love these two pairs, these two people. That's the opposite, complete opposite of Joash and Joada. Like I said, please go study it. It's, it's rich, it's full. Second Chronicles 24 and 25. You would be amazed at the lessons you will learn. May we not end like Joash. May we not end like Joash. May I not end like Joash. Thank you for saying amen for me. Timothy and Paul. Very complete opposite. Acts 16, verse 1 to 5. Timothy and Paul. I love these people. Timothy and Paul. We've seen the negative side. How we can be benefit. We can benefit from uh, mentor, mentoring through with all that. Is spiritual immaturity not going with, following with our hearts? Just doing as following and following. Just because they said we should be following. But you're not convinced. But now let's look at Timothy. Acts 16. Verse 1 to 5. Then came he to Deb and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there, named Timotheus, same as Timothy, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish, Jewish Jewishess, and believed, but his father was a Greek, which was well reported. That's Timothy was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconum. Him would Paul have to go forth with him, and took and circumcised him because of the Jews, which were in those quarters, for they know, for they, for they all knew, I mean, sorry, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the diseases, the decrees for to keep, that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith, and increased in number daily. Please take note of verse 2 which was well reported of. That means, this is uh, King James. That means Timothy was well reported of. The life within, the divine life within, translated into his works, into righteousness that people could see, into, into holy living, righteousness within, and then holy living without, that people could see. The Bible says he was well reported because you know Paul didn't know him, but he was well reported of. What are people saying about you? In your place of work, in the church, in your school, in your home. Do you know? Sometimes you may not know who, who people really are until you go to their houses. There is this video, I think I forwarded it to, 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 to um, so a platform. It touched my heart. The young lady alighted from the Okada and then started, entered into an argument with the, with the Okada man and, and rained curses on him. Rained curses on him and then left and even pronounced to him that he was going to die that night, all because of some few change. Some few minutes later, the young man sat down by the road, and then two people came to minister to him, preaching Christ to him. And one of them, maybe that's how they do theirs. Because I said, why should he, why should he wait for someone to come and pray, for someone to give his life to Jesus? She now said, I've, I preached to you, but my, my senior evangelist is coming to pray for you. Unfortunately, when the senior evangelist came, guess who it was? The lady that had just caused the Okada man. And then the man said, eh, you, never. Because she even told him that that was a good day. That, uh, the, yes, that that was a good day. You, those causes are terrible. That if it was not on a good day. So the man now said, eh, this person 
If this is the one that is going to pray for me, I will rather not have that Jesus and threw the trap away. Not long after that, a car hit him, he died in their presence. Because of the curse, she said, you will die tonight, or because of 200 naira. Which was well reported. Are you well reported? Timothy was well reported. Foundational concept of discipleship. Do you know that it was easy for Timothy to follow? Because he already had a, a, a heart for Jesus. The scripture talks about him as having a genuine faith in Christ. That was why it was easy for him to follow Paul. One of the greatest lessons we can learn from Timothy is to practice genuine faith. Please practice genuine faith. Don't be a fake. And you know the unfortunate thing, no matter how close your mentor is, your mentor doesn't really know your heart. But there is a one who sees all hearts. Before him, everything is open. The scripture says, we, 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 before him, with whom we have everything to do, he knows. Timothy had a spiritual background. But he didn't just have a background, he had a heart ground. Many of us have spiritual background, but there are children of pastors who fake salvation. Yes, it's very easy to conform. Walk like this, dress like this. And when they get to the university, ah, we have people living dual lives. Ah, very easy to live dual lives. Oh, very easy. Go to the university, you see them, ask many of them. Their parents are superintendents. Unfortunately, pastors. Please, have genuine faith. Timothy was converted. Today, there's an erosion of conversion. Everybody's a Christian. I was talking to a parent last week. The child was caught. You know, children would always be children. And so we just, she, was just, she just began to take things, things that were not hers. So we had to invite the mother. The mother is a grounded child of God. So I told her, this is just take it up as a, as a, as a prayer point. And then I told her, I said, I'm happy that you are a, you are a, child, you are a child of God. Not a, I don't want to say a Christian. I don't like using that word again. It has been commonized. I prefer to say you are a child of God. Who is a child of God? Converted. He is converted. He has, a, he has genuine faith in Christ. Genuine faith. Very, very genuine. He knows it. No man knows you except yourself. And that faith is evident, was evidenced in Timothy. It was evident in his conduct and testified of by others. I love what we were told some weeks ago in the ministerial college. We are justified by faith before God, but we can only be justified by works before men. I'm a Christian. I am a child of God. It is not by your speaking in tongues who we know. By your works, by your conduct, by the testimonies people say about you, by your show of love. That's the first thing. Is it to be trained and groomed? Are you a sheep? Are you making life difficult for your mentors? Are you open? Do you know that the extent of your openness is the extent of help you will get? No man, no man can ever help you if you are not open. The Yoruba people say, Omoto ba shikpani yangbe. How shikpani are you? Let me speak like my pastor. My pastor will speak Yoruba and English and it will sound very correct, yes. How shikpani are you? How open are you? The extent of your openness is the extent to which you receive help. So if you keep forming, ah, you are not helping yourself. Timothy was easy to be trained, easy to be groomed. And do you know he suffered along with, with Paul? Oh, Timothy was a beautiful, he had a beautiful heart. A young man pastoring a church of over 5,000, and there must have been beautiful women there. But the thing he had was too genuine for him to throw away at the sight of a beautiful woman. The thing you have, how precious is it to you? Christ you in you, the hope of glory. It mustn't have been easy to be taught by Paul. I can imagine Paul, hard Paul. Very hard, you can see from his letters. But Timothy was submissive. And then, do you know he graduated? He later became a companion. Do you know what it means to be a companion of Paul? And then Paul could proudly say, my son. Others have gone with, for doing things on, on their own way, but I trust my son. What is being said about you? Can we say we trust you when our eyes are not even with you? He never deviated from what Paul taught him. And history says he 
continued to pastor the Ephesians church for another 20 to 30 years. And then he was later martyred under the Roman emperor. Let's round off. First Corinthians 4.17, we're rounding off. First Corinthians 4.17. Are we getting blessed this morning? The church is too quiet. I now understand how my pastor used to feel when there's nothing, when you're you here and then everybody is quiet. Are we getting blessed this morning? First Corinthians 4, 17. For this cause have I sent unto you, Timotheus, who is my beloved son, faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. He had gotten to a level where Paul could trust him and call him his son with pride. Why? Because of the foundation, genuine faith in God, the new faith in Christ. What more can be said? Maximize the mentoring relationship. But the foundation is this, genuine faith in Christ. Ensure your faith is genuine. Ensure you are converted. Because time will prove it. Time will always prove the veracity or the truthfulness of a situation. And times that will prove such will won't be there. There will be no physical presence of your mentors. It is what you have eaten, like Pastor will say, Ajesala. The things you have eaten within, the Christ in you, that is your strength, that is your hope, that is your grace, that is what will help you. Of course, you'll be abused. You'll be rejected, but it doesn't really matter. Why? Because of what you have within you. Let not your relationship with your mentor be like that of Joash and Joada. Rather, let it be like that of Timothy and Paul. Shall we rise to pray?